Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for this time. Uh, praise you, thank you. We ask you to come and teach us a thing today again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Aionios. Aionios is a Greek word found in John chapter 17, verse 3. And the text says, And this is eternal life that uh, they know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life, that they know thee the only true God. Now, the, the, the English word eternal is the Greek word Ionios, eternal, eternity. I know. Ionios. Ionios. Yes, Ionios is uh, the is the word that is translated as as eternal. Now this word is uh, is largely used in the Gospel of John. I don't know where John got this this complex Greek, but uh, he he might not have known too much Greek, but at least he picked some significant terms to use, like uh, logos. Uh, that day will come when we talk about the logos of John. But uh, another term that he uses. Uh, so often and frequently in this, in this gospel is, uh, is that of our news and uh, it's very interesting when you look at this text. Eternal life is knowing the only true God. It's very interesting. That's eternal life. The only way to access eternal life is to know the only true God. The only true God. Now, the important objective here is true God. Okay? Uh, that means you might be knowing God. Okay? But that does not necessarily mean that you know the only true God. So you knowing God is not enough for you to get eternal life. For you to know, to have eternal life, you need to know the only true God. That's why it's very important when someone tells you praise Jesus to know which Jesus you're praising. Is it the only true Jesus or, or, or something else? So you need to know who the only true God is. Okay? Uh, and, 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 and once that is, uh, is, 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 is established, then, then you can go. So eternal life is knowing the only true God. And I think we'll come back to that later. But uh, for now, Let's look at uh, the Ionios, eternity. What is eternity? How would you uh, define eternity? In one word. What is eternity? An endless. An endless. Uh-huh. An ending. Those are two words. Oh, that's one word. An ending. An ending is one word. An ending. An ending. Endless. Okay, an ending. Okay, fine. But, 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 but. Fundamentally, eternity is time, isn't it? Okay. Okay. That's how we know it, at least. <coughs> okay. that, that's how we know it. It's, it's, uh, it's time. Now, the Bible has two ideologies. They, of course, there's a third one, but which is very weak, and that is the Aramaic ideology. Very weak because even the text that uh, represent Aramaic in the Bible are very few. But uh, the dominant two ideologies of the Bible are, are the Hebraic, that's Hebrew, ideology and the Grecian, that's Greek ideology, okay? Now, in, uh, in those two worlds, all right, in, the, in those two worlds, there is a way each world understands time. In, in the Hebraic ideology, time, there is nothing like it is 11 o'clock, independent of what is happening. Do you understand? There is nothing like that. But in the Greek, there is time independent of happening. Mm. And it is, and this world actually is influenced by the Greeks. So for us, you can say, what time is it now, by the way? What time is it? 12.30. It is 12.30. Now you can see that the way you talk about time, you talk about time independent of what is happening. That's the Grecian way. Mm. So it is an abstract way and perspective of time. 
it is 12 30. Mm. But in Hebrew, there's nothing like 12 30. It must be 12 of 12, 12, 12 30 of something. Maria Gage Missana. Aha, Maria Gage Missana like Uganda. Now, in the, in the Hebrew or the Hebraic ideology of time, time is an event. We don't have time until something happens. Together. Uh -huh, that's the Hebrew way. So there is no time. Okay? Uh -huh, they are just events. And I think they are the ones who influence the, the AD, the BC, yeah? uh -huh, the counting of time and clustering of time. You, you, you have to understand that for them, there is nothing like time. They are only events. We attach time to an event in Hebrew. Okay? In Greek, we attach an event to time. The two are different, if you understand. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. There, there is time without an event in Greek or in the Grecian way of thinking. You are way of thinking because you are influenced by them. It is 12.30 and it doesn't matter what is happening. But to the Hebrew mind, something must happen, then we can think of time. So to them, time is an event. Is it? Okay. So, so, what then does the the Greek mind mean by saying "aionios"? What does he mean when he says "eternity"? I think it was Plato who actually coined the word "aionios." Eternity. Okay. <laughs> so, what did he mean? And why does John borrow that Greek and apply it to life that we expect to get with the believers in Jesus Christ? Why? Why? I think those, those are very, very, very So, so Aeneas, uh, it is not time. Why? Because time, characteristically, has a beginning and an end. It was 12.30 then now, but it's no longer 12.30, isn't it? Mm. Why? Because it has a beginning and an end. Aha, good. So Aeneas is not that. Therefore, Aeneas is not time. Why? Because it depends on the, on, the, on the key characters of time. Beginning, end, number one, number two, change. Change. Okay? Time changes, doesn't it? Uh-huh. But, but, but to, to, to this Ionios, it, it is not subject to change. So it is disqualified again to be identified as time. Okay? Then, number three, growth. There must be growth within time. Of course, that is under change, but there must be some growth. Okay? Under, under time. In Ionios, things do not grow. Things don't begin in Ionios. Things don't end in Ionios. Things do not grow. Things do not change. It is Ionios. So when we talk about eternal life, when we Christians talk about eternal life, we are, we are intimating those four things. Where things don't begin and therefore do not end. Where things do not change and where things do not go. So, so for those of you who are preparing to go into eternal life, that's where you are going. You are going to an era. Okay? <laughs> to, 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 you are going to a place where you have never begun. But where you are, is that you were born, isn't it? Therefore you were, therefore you began. Is it? You even celebrate your birthdays, don't you? Whenever you celebrate your birthday, you are celebrating your beginning. Okay, exactly. Whether you are celebrating or remembering, it is the beginning. Uh huh. <laughs> so that's what you're doing. You are telling the world that you 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 have ever begun. Isn't it? Now John is telling us in John chapter 17 that this is eternal life. Once you know and believe that one true God, okay, you have never begun. And the following therefore cannot be attached to what, had, what has, has never begun. The following. You can't end. Why? Because you've never begun. You can't change. Why? Because you've never begun. You can't grow. Mm. 
<laughs> now that is what God is telling us. Amen. Do, do, you see, do you see the meaning and the power of these words? When you understand them from the original text? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Good, good. So, so and, and we all know who has never begun. Who is that? God. Why? Because Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning God created the universe. That's what Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, is it? Hmm? Brilliant. Now, where we are, because today we know, at least majority of us, we know that God is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where was he before he created heaven? To which is his abode, as some tells us, and the Old Testament. Where was he? Mm -hmm. So between heaven and God, who is in, who, who is in the other? Heaven. heaven is in God. Thank you very much. Why? Because God was before what? Uh -huh. So when God began to create heaven and earth, the only present place then was who? God. Then after he created heaven and earth in who? God. Exactly. Now he has and he has never begun. Are we together? But heaven and earth did what? Began. Uh -huh. Now since the two had a beginning. They therefore have and true or false? True. Good. It is only God who doesn't have and therefore eternal life is not in heaven and earth. Eternal life is not in any other thing that has ever begun. Eternal life is only in God who has never begun. That is what John is telling us. And this is eternal life. Knowing the only true God who has never begun. That, because that's where it is possible. Now clearly, I am just pointing up my sermon before I even begin. Clearly, if you want eternal life, it has got only one source. The one true God. See. Finished, isn't it? Clearly. So that's what you is telling us. Now, in the New Testament, there are, there are two fold use or benefits of Ionios. Part one are the blessings of Ionios. Then the other part are the curses of Ionios. The blessings of Ionios are eternal because Ionios is eternity. And the curses of Ionios are also eternal. Why? Because the news is eternal. Now we are going to read uh, uh, very quickly too much Bible, and I want us to do it very fast. Uh, John Hebrews chapter thirteen verse twenty. Then one was going into Hebrews, should also go into chapter nine verse fifteen. Nine fifteen. Mm. Then John. Oh, let's start with uh, Hebrews thirteen twenty. <laughs> Hebrews uh, thirteen. Thirteen twenty says. Mm. Now may the God of peace, mm. who through the blood of the eternal covenant mm -hmm. brought back from the dead mm. our Lord Jesus, mm. a great shepherd of the sheep, mm. equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Key what we are looking for there in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Eternal covenant. The, the covenant that we have with God has no time. Now, we've all participated in agreements, isn't it? The, the land agreement, CTC, they, even, they, they, they have time. Isn't it? The covenant that we have with God, which covenant is that? The one in which we have a relationship with Him. Okay? Is eternal. It, it never began. Why? Because one of the participants that participated in that covenant never began. So the relationship has never begun, therefore it cannot end. The relationship between you and God, once you enter into a covenant with God, it cannot end. 
Why can't it end once you believe Jesus Christ? Because he has never begun. How do I know that? Because he says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, I knew you before I created you. In other words, you were with him in his eternity. You can only fall out of eternity. So you have a relationship with God that cannot end. Now that is not as important as this one. The way God feels about you cannot change. God has an eternal loving attitude towards you. That can't change. Then it is not a feeling. Aha. Therefore it is not a feeling. Why? It is, it is a standard attitude towards you. Eternal covenant. The first legal and co co Hebrew covenant that he had with the Jews ended. Why? Because it began. Even the stipulations were legal. The one that we have with God today, once we believe Jesus Christ, that covenant is eternal. Hebrews 9.15 Who is in John 14.1? 2 Corinthians 5 1. Hebrews 9 15. 9 15. Yes. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. Okay. That those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. <laughs> now, from eternal covenant, we have another blessing. Another blessing is the eternal inheritance. Eternal redemption, eternal inheritance. Now, some of you, your parents died and you inherited some things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Were those things eternal? Mm -hmm. No, they weren't. Now, here's the thing that, that is to say, we are not going to inherit this, this world. This world is not our inheritance. Okay, not even heaven is our inheritance. Because most Christians are mistaken to think that we are going to inherit heaven. We are building mansions. We are told that we are building mansions. I am coming to the mansion, please don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to inherit heaven, isn't it? But heaven is not eternal. Why it began? That's why even the Bible says that I am creating the new heavens and the new world. That means because the former has what? Pastor. Pastor. So, so we cannot inherit heaven. I'm sorry to discourage those who want to go to heaven. Why? Because heaven also is going to pass away. It is not eternal. We have an eternal inheritance, and that inheritance is in the eternity of God and the being of God. That we have in the redemption of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen. Okay, now, let's go to another one. Question. John 14, 1. Uh-huh. Mm. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Okay. You believe in God? Yes. Believe also in me. Mm. My father's house has many rooms. Yeah. If that were not so, mm. would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? No, no, no. <coughs> for those of you. <coughs> Excuse me, for those of you who have, uh, <coughs> who have read what I've written about the mansions, okay? You very well know where are those mansions are. Where are those mansions? In God. <laughs> because it says, let, your, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in who? In me. In my Father's house. Where is that house? In the Father. It, it, it is the father. The house is the father. Why? Because the father cannot be housed. Mm. <laughs> Do you understand? God is not like we men who build houses and dwell in them. For there is no house that can accommodate God. It is rather that God creates houses in him. 
the our eternal habitation our eternal habitation is in god amen, amen. it is where god. it is in god but wait a minute before we go in god there is another house that we are under you know that house Second Corinthians chapter 5. Uh -huh. there, there, there is that house that we are housed under. Chapter 5 verse 1 says 5 1 says For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed uh -huh. we have a building from God. Okay. An eternal house uh -huh. in heaven. Not yeah. built by human hands. Ladies and gentlemen, this body that we are under began and it ends, it grows, it changes. But we are going to have another Ionios body. You are going to be dressed with another different body that does not grow. And I think this is good news, most especially to women. You are going to be dressed in a body okay, that doesn't need makeup. That is Ionios. It doesn't change. There was a no zuko zuko se wami mwini. Where your body is going to be fresh. You are going to be dressed in a body that does not need filters. If for the men. You're going to be dressed in that body. I am yours. That is what eternity means. Everything is going to be to shift from temporal to eternity. I am yours. It's not going to change. It's not going to grow. You won't be celebrating birthdays in eternity. You won't be having watches on your wrists because there is no time to calculate and to keep. You won't keep time. Those are thousand years is time. Those are disgusting <laughs> things that began. When, when you see people telling that we are going for a thousand years, then know that you are not going into eternity. Whenever you see calculations, then we shall be in heaven for a thousand years. That is not eternity. That is calculated in time. That begins and does work and ends. That's not your news. And then there are the curses of eternity. Okay? Mark chapter 3, verse 28, 29. The first curse. The first eternal curse. Mark 3, 28, 29. 28, 29. Yes. Says, uh, Truly I tell you, mm. people can be forgiven all their sins and every slap that they utter. Yes. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will mm. never be forgiven. Okay. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Oh. There is an eternal sin. What is the eternal sin? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? God. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, but what is that sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit? What is it? John will tell us what it is in John 16. Let me just simplify it because people eh eh chibe chita sonyeka Aha. Eh John 16 verse 8 and 9. When he comes, mm. he will prove uh -huh. the world yes. to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Oh, so people will be wrong about sin, righteousness and judgment. Let's dwell on sin because that's where our interest is. Isn't about it? sin. Okay? Because people do not believe in me. What is the unforgivable sin? not believing in him and belief in God huh? it's it again <laughs> <laughs> when he comes yes he will prove the world mm. to be in the wrong about sin number one righteousness number two and judgment about sin what is the sin about sin yes because people do not believe in me 
That is the unforgivable sin. That is the eternal sin. The rest of the sins are begin and end. They can begin when you're doing them and end at the point when Jesus so called forgives you. The sin of unbelief is not a sin that you can repent. It is unending. Because it is unending. You, you can only survive that sin by believing Jesus Christ right now. If by the time of the second coming you have not believed, that sin is eternal. It is an eternal sin, as Mark tells us. It is eternal. Why? Because your unbelief in God has never begun. Since your inception, you have never believed in God and you will never believe in Him. Uh. So what is the unforgivable sin? Unbelief in God. Because there is no way God can forgive you. In fact, even if God forgave you, it doesn't make any sense. Why? You can't access eternity without belief. For those who come to God must believe that He does what? He exists. If they can't, they can't come to him. There is no way you can access what you don't believe. Let's have another curse. Eternal, eternal curse. Thessalonians 1 9. Perfect. Second Thessalonians 1 9. Second Thessalonians 1 Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. Such people will hey. suffer the punishment of eternal destruction by being separated from the Lord's presence uh -huh. and from his glorious power. What 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 is eternal the, the, the second curse is eternal destruction, isn't it? But how does it happen? By being separated from the Lord's presence. From the Lord's presence. Now, e eternal destruction happens when you are separated from eternal, from the presence of God, and that is eternal life, isn't it? So eternal destruction is when you are not in the presence, okay, in the vicinity of the eternal God. Now question, in the context of the omnipresent God, a God who is everywhere, isn't it? When you are not where God is, where are you? Nowhere. Eternal destruction. Now I am here to inform you that I and also, also teaches us that those of you who have told people that you are going to go in hell and they burn you for a thousand years, one finger, and they burn another finger for a thousand years, that is not eternal destruction. That is calculatable time. You, can, you are doing your time in hell. <laughs> are we together? But the hell that the Bible teaches about is where God is it. eternal destruction. That is an eternal curse. You are going to be eternally dis dismissed and you'll be no more. It's an eternal disappearance. Yes, Amen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a parable. It's a parable and uh, it's very important. Always not to dwell on the teaching aid and miss the lesson. Don't get lost in frustrations. Uh, don't, don't get lost in frustrations here. So let's leave Lazarus and, and Abraham alone. Uh, may God bless you, sister. Rest as you shift from the teaching aid to, to, <laughs> to, to the lesson. We'll get to that problem and then get to know. It's, 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 so I know is the knowledge of the true God, okay? And Ineos is, is only in Jesus Christ, the only true incarnate God. Amen? Now, Jesus used three, three metaphors, okay? And uh, actually four of them, they are not actually all metaphorical, but he, he applied this word Ineos on each. When he said that I am water, okay? He applied Ineos on water. When he said I am food, he put there Ionios. When he said, I am the one, he put there Ionios. <laughs> when he took, when he reached on himself, he said, he also put there Ionios. For instance, in John chapter 4, verse 19. Hmm? John chapter 4, verse 19. He, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 14. 414. Yes. It's that story where we get the name of our fellowship. 414. Yes. But whoever drinks the water 
I give them. There's that water. There's that water in supply in this earth, isn't it? There is also another water that Jesus gives. Okay. What happens? Will never thirst. Okay. Indeed, mm. the water I give them will become in them a mm. spring of water welling up to mm. eternal life. Ah. The water that Jesus gives becomes like a spring to eternal what? Not to, not refreshment like the water that we take. To refresh what is going to end and refresh again, isn't it? No, the water that Jesus gives, the living water that Jesus gives, takes us to eternal life. What about the food? Again in John. Yeah, John 6. 27 and verse 54. John 6. 47? Mm. 627. 627. 627. Mm. It says that do not work for food mm. that spoils. Okay. But for food that endures to eternal life. Oh. Which the Son of Man hey. will give. Verse 54. So so there is food that doesn't endure. And it is the food that we eat. Whoever, we eat and recycle. Uh -huh. Whoever eats my flesh. Uh-huh. And drinks my blood uh -huh. has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Now, do you know why Jesus says and tells us to eat his flesh and drink his blood? Because only his flesh and blood has never begun. Therefore, it has ingredients of your news. Okay. <laughs> the bread that we are talking about has ingredients of ionios. So when you're eating Jesus Christ, okay, you are feeding on eternal life. Do you understand? That's what you're feeding on. You are eternal. You are not just immortal. That is in the verse 50. Eh, that is verse 54. 56. The person who eats my flesh okay. and drinks my blood okay. remains in me uh -huh. and I in him. Thank you very much. Because those ingredients, by, by taking on Jesus Christ, okay, you are entering the eternity. So when you die and they bury, they are going to bury this body, which you looked at, the one that wrote, isn't it? You are yet to be dressed with an eternal body into an eternal being. You are in him and him in you. You are eternal. The difference between Ionios or eternity to, with, to, to, to that of immortality, isn't it? Immortal things began. Can I say that again? Immortal things began. The news that we're talking about is not immortality. You are entering into something that has never begun. Amen? Amen. John 6, again, 68. Tom, you're there. Verse 68. Mm. Peter, go to 1 John 5.20. 1 John 5.20. But Tom, 6, 68. Uh, Simon Peter answered him. Yes. Lord, mm. to whom would we go mm. you have the words of eternal life? The, 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 the words that the, there's a minister here in Uganda is called, uh, he has a very nice voice, he's the minister of security. He's called Bamulanga Chisebija. Okay? He has a very nice voice, that man. And, and he always tells people, Chikuru nyo abantu uko gini vita mevita kadiwa. It's very important for people to say words that do not fail. <laughs> now, Peter told Jesus that the words that you say have what? Where shall I go to get words of it? How many words <laughs> have you had so far? Where, where how many else? books have you read? Where else? How, how many philosophies have you heard about? But the word of Jesus Christ has stood the test of time. Why? Because it has eternity in it, the word of Jesus. And finally, what does John say? First, John say. We know 
also yes. Yes. that the Son of God mm. has come and has given us understanding mm. so that we may know him mm. who is true. Mm. And we are in him yes. who is true by being in his Son Jesus Christ. Mm. He is the true God mm. and eternal life. Jesus Christ is the true God. <laughs> And, and John tells us, <laughs> and John tells us, and this is eternal life, to know who? The only true God. Who is Jesus Christ. Read again. Read again. Emphasis of life. We know also that the yes. Son of God. Yes has come and has given us understanding uh -huh. so that we may know him mm. who is true. Uh, because people think that there is Jesus and there is God and therefore Jesus is the Son of God, it is, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. Even John told us, and this is eternal life, to know the, the true God and Jesus Christ whom we are saved. They look like they are two, isn't it? Mm. Continue. And we are in him. We are in him, in who? who? In is Jesus. True, yes. uh -huh. Who is true by being his son, Jesus Christ? Uh -huh. God that is the son. Let's continue. He is the true God and eternal life. That very Jesus that you call the son of God is the true God and he is the eternal life. There is no way you can access eternal life without knowing the one true God, and that is Jesus Christ. My time is up, but John chapter 3 verse 15 says, For God, 3.15, let me read it to myself, 3.15. John 3.15. Yes. So that everyone who believes in him. Yes. Let's start with 15. Start with 15, don't worry. So that everyone who believes in him yes. may have eternal life. Simple. Who? Jesus, isn't it? Uh-huh. Go to the famous one, 16. For this is how God loved the world. Mm. He gave his unique son so that everyone who believes in him mm. might not be lost but have Eternal life. But we have said that eternal life is only in one being, aka God. 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 So God equals Father equals eternal life. Simple. That's the simple mathematics. John 5:24. You are still in John 2. Mm -hmm. 5:24. <laughs> Peter, you read verse 36 of chapter 3, John. 5:24. Yes. Truly, I tell all of you yes. in certainty. Yes. In, in certainty. Whoever hears what I say yes. and believes in the one who sent me okay. has eternal life uh. and will not be judged but has passed from death to life. 336. Three, 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 My time is up. 336. Yes. Whoever believes in the Son mm. has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. God bless you. Amen.